all other areas of our lives suffer as a result. When my mommy was sick with a mental health disorder, she didn't take care of herself. She let her physical health just wane. She was malnourished. She probably weighed about 80 pounds. Um, she was going into stores and she was taking things without having any cash on her or any car. She was doing things that just were not healthy for her body. And what if she had been arrested? The police were very merciful. And what they did was they called me instead of arresting her so that this way I would be able to come and tend to her. But think about that. A 62-year-old woman having to go to jail who's already psychotic. That wouldn't be healthy for her. So when we think about our potential, would she be able to serve God in that way? No. So your mental health affects every aspect of your life. So let's look at what, what we need to be doing. Some of the fruits of good health, good mental health are that. He says, in him, I am well pleased. So again, it helps you to realize your own potential in the kingdom of God. It helps you to develop healthy coping skills with life. Because what did he tell us? Life will have trials and tribulations. But take heart, I have overcome. And because he has overcome, so have we. So when life has its unavoidable stressors and events that are pleasant and unpleasant, we can rejoice. And we can also have hope in him. The outcome is that we can have meaningful contributions to the kingdom and to the world. Are we supposed to just exist while we're here on this earth? We have purpose. And that is the great commission. That is to share and spread the gospel of truth to any and every person who will receive it. We are, have, we are to have healthy rapport with one another. He tells us to be unified in the body of Christ. Even though you have a part, I have a part, and we may do different things, we still all have a part to play. And that means that we have to have relationships. If we have healthy fellowship with God and with others, that's the basis of all relationships and interactions. So if you're unhealthy in your relationship, say, for instance, with your spouse, with your mom, with your dad, that relationship that's unhealthy carries over into your other relationships, your workplace, it carries over into your church relationships, it carries over into when you go to the grocery store. So think about it. Healthy relationship with God and others helps you to have a fruitful way of bearing fruit for the kingdom of God. So what is mental illness? We just talked about overall what mental health is. Mental illness is defined as a disorder according to the DSM. DSM is the Diagnostic Statistical Manual, which means that it's a, a manual that doctors use in order to diagnose you with something. But there's something that is different from a medical diagnosis. Oftentimes, disorder means there's no pathology. That means they cannot tell you specifically what particular bacteria cause something, for example. So when there's no pathology, guess what? All the information that the doctor is getting is coming from various sources. It's coming from observations by family and friends. It's coming from the person themselves. It's coming from history and behaviors verbiage, observation. So all of this goes into the diagnosis. But basically, disorders impair regular function and requires treatment for every single person who has a disorder. So think about it. If you have a disorder that was not a mental health disorder, would it affect your life? Absolutely. Would it affect the people around you? Absolutely. Would there be some concessions that would have to be made for you? Absolutely. So we can see there's a trickle effect that it not only affects that one person, but the trickle effect goes from the family to the church, to the community, 
to the world. And it can also be combined with other disorders. So you can have one disorder and then have another disorder, like my mommy. She's living with bipolar disorder, which is a mood disorder. That means her mood goes from one extreme to the next. And she is living with a psychotic disorder, which is called paranoid schizophrenia. So that's a thinking disorder. So she has two things that she's living with, but that doesn't define her because we know that she's a daughter of the most high God. Okay. What are some of the common and persistent types of mental illnesses that exist? Some of them include things like what I told you. The biggest one is anxiety disorder. If you've ever had sweaty palms, if you've ever sweat when you're getting ready to speak in front of a crowd, I'm sweating a little bit, then <laughs> if you've ever had an opportunity to avoid a situation because you don't know how you really will respond to it, that's a little bit of anxiety. All of us have can say that we've experienced anxiety, right? Well, that's a mental illness. That means mentally, you are not at your peak level. Just like physically, you cannot be at your peak level, right? If you have a cold, that means you have an illness. So it's the same thing, okay? Then when you think about some uh, other disorders that can be uh, major depression, it's a schizophrenia, like I mentioned, and there's two types. One is paranoid schizophrenia, and the other one is hallucinative schizophrenia. That might be where you might hear voices and they sound very real in your head. So we, as a person outside, we may not be able to hear that, but they hear it loud and clear over everything else that someone might hear. Like I mentioned before, bipolar disorder, that's a mood disorder where you go from one extreme to the next, and sometimes without very much warning. Then, believe it or not, autism spectrum disorder, which is a, a cognitive disorder, is also a mental illness. So if you have children in school, and if indeed your child has some symptoms of autism, they would be categorized into a special group that would need extra help because cognitively they're not functioning at the same level that someone else may be. So, and there's nothing wrong with that. Sometimes we all need help, right? And then borderline personality disorder is another one. Eating disorders like bulimia, uh, anorexia, and binge eating disorders where people eat a lot. And then because of how they perceive the way they look, They'll go into the bathroom and try to get rid of it very quickly. So it has no time to digest. Attention deficit disorder or hyperactivity disorder, or it's called ADHD. That's where sometimes people will not be able to really focus for very long periods of time. Obsessive compulsive disorder and post-traumatic stress disorder, which is PTSD. And that's not just for veterans like my husband. My husband is an army veteran, but it's not just for a veteran. Any person, if you sustain a hurricane, a tornado, if you experience trauma in that you witness, a very bad car accident or something of that nature, where you've seen someone die and it was unexpected to you, that can be a post-traumatic stress disorder that you can develop as a result of that. So what are some of the signs and symptoms that you might need to look out for? Because remember, prevention is so much better than actually dealing with the issue when it comes. So some of the signs that you can observe as a problem might be someone who excessively cries. Crying, there's nothing wrong with that. God even tells us that he captures all of our tears. However, if you have a person who just nonstop they have no control over whether they're bawling their eyes out. That's an indication that there might be a problem. How about wearing layers of clothing in the summer? Sometimes that can mean that somebody is cutting themselves. Sometimes that could mean that they're losing a lot of weight because maybe they're having an eating disorder. 
So they don't want you to notice. So they're wearing a lot of clothing. So that this way you don't pay attention to it. Poor hygiene and grooming habits. Like I told you, my mom is a fashionista. But when she was psychotic, she did not take care of herself at all. There were times where I know she would be doing for days on end. Body tremors. Sometimes people can shake. And that can be an indication of other things as well. But if you have some like body tremors, that, that can be a sign that something is going on with them neurologically. And sometimes neurological issues are uh, can result from mental health issues. Intense mood swings. Remember I told you, you can go from 10 to zero in a minute or zero to 10 in a minute. And that would be a mood disorder. Appearing giddy or hyperactive, just way too happy for something. Sometimes when a person has made a decision that they want to end their life, they're so happy about finally coming to that decision that they will be giddy about it. And that can be unusual. Impaired speech, changes in movement, slow speech. Sometimes those can indicate that a person has a substance abuse disorder. And substance abuses can often be a result of a person trying to mask what is going on mentally. So what symptoms do we need to look for when the person reports as a problem? Sometimes if a person says, you know, there's no hope, I just can't get past the fact that now that I've had this stroke, I just can't move my right side. This is just weighing so heavily on me that I cannot deal with it. Sometimes when a person feels that hopeless, we need to make the time to ask them, how can I come alongside you? If they have trouble concentrating, oftentimes you'll see this in teenagers, feeling down or depressed, hearing voices, seeing things, being very irritable, changes in eating and sleeping habits, loss of energy or feeling nervous. These are things that we need to watch out for, but when the person themselves actually reports this to you, we need to take note. So let's look at the mind and the heart connection, okay? Let's look at the scripture here in Mark 5, chapter 15 and 16. It reads, and they come to Jesus and see him that was possessed with the devil and had the legion sitting and clothed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. And they that saw it told them how it befell to him that was possessed of the devil and also concerning the swine. I, remember, I think you may remember this story where the legion of demons, not one, but a legion of demons was cast out by Jesus into the pigs and the pigs then fell into the sea of Galilee and drowned. When we think about this, why were those people afraid of the man? Why would you think they'd be afraid? Anyone? Because before he was possessed, his mind was altered. He did not have his own right mind. He did not have the mind of Christ. Now, I read this over and over again, and I thought to myself, were they actually afraid of him? Or were they afraid because of the power of Almighty Jesus Christ? Once I read it over and over again and studied it in context, it came to me the same power that Jesus exemplified and they were afraid. They were not afraid of the man per se, but they were afraid because wow, they saw the power of Jesus Christ heal this man of being possessed in his mind, because we know that when we think about something, how we think is how we behave, right? So if we believe that it's going to rain, then we might carry an umbrella, correct? Because we thought that it might rain. So our mind tells us something, and then our behavior follows it. But I looked at this, and I said, wow, the connection between the mind and the heart is powerful. Because here's what Luke 6.45 says. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart, bring it forth that which is good. And an evil man, out of the evil treasure of his heart, bring it forth that which is evil. For the abundance of the heart, his mouth speaketh. So when we think about that, right? 
we just talked about how this man had a legion of demons and he was influenced by the demons, right? So Christ could not live in him because he was possessed. It says possessed. We know that a believer cannot be possessed by a demon because the spirit of God and the spirit of darkness cannot exist in the same space. So when we think about his temple, that man's mind was controlled by the demon, right? So that means he was possessed. When we think about our heart, our heart belongs to God. If we are believers in Christ, if we are not believers in Christ, guess what comes out? The evil that we are, that's the depths of who we are, the true man that we are. Well, because we fell, right? Because of Adam and Eve, we have a sinful nature. But once we receive and surrender ourselves to Jesus Christ Almighty, then we no longer have that heart that wants to sin. We have a heart that wants to live for God. Now, will we sin again? Perhaps, yes, because we are weak. Our nature is of Adam and Eve, but we were adopted into the kingdom of heaven by Jesus Christ and his reconciliation. So the Holy Spirit empowers us, gives us the ability to live with a heart that's filled with him. Every now and again, you'll see that a person who is a believer in Christ, they will do something. But what does God offer us? The ability to confess and then to turn, to repent and turn away from, and he will forgive us. So there's no condemnation in Jesus Christ. So thank God our hearts and our minds can belong to him. There's hope in holistic care. So what do I mean by holistic care? I'll tell you. We can plant the seeds of agape love and become what is called a love evolutionary. This is a term that I, I, I phrase because I've heard revolutionary, of course, I've heard missionary, of course, I've heard all types of areas. <laughs> but one of the things that I haven't heard of is us being revolutionaries as believers in Christ. So John 13, 35 says, by this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. Okay, what does love look like? Love looks like a whole lot according to Jesus Christ and according to the word. We are to pray without ceasing. That's one of the most important things because we know the power of prayer, fervent and effective prayer. Praise in the midst of the process. If we only praise God when things are going well, what does that seem like to someone else watching us? That may seem like we only want Jesus Christ because of the benefits that he provides to us. But if we praise him even in the midst of our troubles, what that shows is our love for Jesus Christ. So that's what I mean by becoming a love evolutionary, not doing what the world says, being conformed to the world, but doing what God says, and that's being a love evolutionary. So what's the holistic way of helping someone who may have a mental health issue? We need to adopt the holistic agenda. Our spirits need cleansing by the blood of Jesus Christ. And that requires, if they are able to, to confess and to repent wherever that's appropriate. Because some, some mental illnesses are caused by sin. Let's just be honest. It could be caused by sin. And there are some mental illnesses that are not. Our soul needs strengthening by edification from our first responder, which is the word, and the truth-filled word. So make sure that when we're studying the word, we study it line by line, pretext by pretext, so that we understand it in context and we don't just pull something out just for our own purposes. We need to engage in warfare prayer to resist and rebuke the enemy and the lies to help that person to truly believe. It's just like the man who came who brought his son and said, Jesus, if you can help me, so Jesus asked him the question, if, you, did you just say if, if I can help you? <laughs> His response was, all things are possible to them who believe. 
And guess what the man says? Oh God, Lord, help my unbelief. So we, even as believers, we know the come to Jesus. We know that. But still, we can doubt what we know to be the truth. So that's where we need to rebuke the enemy and the lies and help the person to believe. Take action in the natural. That's the body. That's the, the actual physical action that you must take. Take action in the natural based upon his wisdom, his discernment, and the available resources to you. So what is a evolutionary strategy, okay? Let's look at this here and study this for a moment. Your response should look like this. Ask for permission. If we think about Jesus in Mark chapter, it's really chapter 10, verse 51. Please correct it in your, in your notes. <laughs> but it's really Mark chapter 10, verse 51. And Jesus asks, how can I help you? Oftentimes, that's what he did. How can I help you? What do you want from me? How do you want me to heal you? You know, aside from the, the, the woman, um, the blind woman, he asked people, what do you want me to do for you? What be specific? Because see, Jesus was very specific about how he approached you. He approached you with gentleness, with love, with kindness, with care. But he wanted you to get something out of it as well, an awareness, a realization. So when we approach, do so with empathy, love, non-judgment, and listen, just like Jesus listened. Remember, remember the woman at the well? He listened for more than what she was telling him. She was in so much pain, and they shouldn't have been talking anyway, according to the culture of the time. But if you think about it, how he listened to that woman. He listened to her for the things that she wasn't saying in addition to what she was saying. He filled in the blanks for her. So sometimes when we ask the Lord for discernment, we may need to fill in some of those blanks for people and help them to get to where they need to in order to receive the help. So approach with love, non-judgment, empathy, and listen like Jesus. Seek appropriate help. Okay, you have to get the right kind of help. First Timothy 5.23, this is where Paul says, don't drink water. You need alcohol because you need to ensure that your stomach is cleansed properly, that your stomach is guarded against the things that might come against you. Because again, you need to be healthy in order to be able to go out and share the gospel, right? If you're not feeling well, you know, where are you going to share the gospel? You're trying to, you know, go to the bathroom because you have a runny belly or something. So I say all that to say, if Paul says, he says, don't drink water. Drink a little alcohol to keep your stomach from getting upset. Medical professionals, pastors, your pastor, your uh, licensed professional counselors, which is what LPC stands for, psychiatrists, psychologists, peers, Peers are people who have mental health diagnosis. So they have experience. Prayer lines, CIT trained uh, law enforcement. So if you had to call the police, you can ask for a crisis intervention trained police officer. So that this way they have been trained in dealing with mental health issues. Then you come alongside the person. You remember the story of where the friends came and brought the crippled man and they dropped him down into the roof because when they were passing through, they couldn't get through. So they said, you know what? By all costs, we are going to get him to see Jesus. So they put him on a blanket and lowered him through the roof. And that's in Mark uh, chapter 2, verse 4, and Luke 5, 19. And then in Acts 8, 26 and, uh, to 40, we read about the Egyptian. And remember, he didn't really understand the word, but he wanted to be baptized, right? So Philip then says, well, let me help you out. Let me explain exactly what you're reading so that this way you have an understanding of what's going on with you, what you're asking for. Because if otherwise, well, <laughs> you're, you're just reading this and it's reading and it doesn't make sense to you. 
because your spirit is not alive in Christ. So we have to help him to understand. And that's what we need to do. We need to come alongside and help people who are living with a mental health diagnosis or who you suspect is living with a mental health diagnosis. When we come alongside them, we commit ourselves to helping this person to get to a better place, but yet still fostering independence because you don't want them to, you know, to basically be dependent upon us. We want them to be independent and have a relationship with God and with their medical professionals. So I have a bunch of resources that I have left with you. And these are some resources that you can take hold and use for any kind of mental health issues. And uh, I wanna say yay to NAMI, the National Alliance on Mental Illness, because NAMI has been able to get the suicide prevention lifeline number to be like 911, but it's 988. So if you were to call 988, if you are ever in crisis, they can talk to you and help you help a person or help the person that is actually having the, the issue. NAMI also provides mental health education. And I just want to share with you that from my belief as a believer in Christ, as well as NAMI, Mental health needs loving communication. We need to season our words with salt. Sometimes we get frustrated with people who may be having a mental health crisis, but I want you to know that responding that same way is not going to help them. We need loving communication. That means being a love evolutionary. Language matters. And peers who is someone living with a mental health diagnosis, often they take note of how to communicate with them. We have something that we teach called the LEAP method. And that LEAP method is a wonderful way of communicating with someone who may have a mental health issue. So I just want to thank you for listening to my presentation. And I thank you for anything that you do for the mental health of, and well being of not only our family of Christ, but any other persons as well, because that is sharing the love of Jesus Christ. I praise God for this opportunity once again from your pastor and from Ms. Abby and you as congregants who are listening, my brothers and sisters in Christ. And let's praise God from whom all blessings flow. Amen. So, uh, Let's, let's thank God for the various opportunities that we have in Christ Jesus. We are seeing what the Lord did, even for that man, then Mark that I found. Our Lord is Jehovah Rapha, the one that heals. No matter the nature of the mental disorder, whether autism, whether bipolar, God is the healer. God is the healer. I want us to thank God for the blood of Jesus Christ that makes available even the healing powers. Shall we thank you? Father, thank you. Thank you, God, God of heaven. For you are Jehovah God, Jehovah Rapha, the Lord that healed from all manners of infirmities, mental disorder of various categories. Beginning from autism to bipolar and all the other ones that we are planned to be. We know the whole world of them that has situated a man under their dream. We see how terrible the situation was, hurting himself, destroying himself. But the Lord, when he met the Christ, he was in his right mind. We thank you, Lord God of heaven, for that power. And we pray this morning. That Lord, every form of mental disorder, Lord God of heaven, in the lives of people, we ask God for a release of your living back in the name of Jesus Christ. That Lord, that you will cause each and every one of them to be in their right mind in Jesus' name. When we are in our right mind, oh Lord, every form of storm will be made quiet. Therefore, we pray this morning that in the name of Jesus. No matter Lord, the, the, the degree of the mental disorder, we ask for your supernatural intervention in the name of Jesus. 
time to go against Sister Ben that you are being talking. Even to open our eyes to some of this food. Now we ask that you continue to stand by her. We ask the God of heaven that you continue to be with her. In the name of Jesus Christ, we commit the church to Christian gospel churches all over Africa into your heart. We ask the Lord of heaven that you as they spread the gospel of Jesus Christ in Africa. Lord, I ask the God that you will back up the world. You want the bridge to Jesus' name. Thank you for hearing. Blessed be the name of the Lord. As our sister and our husband go back, we ask the God that you be with them. That the grace of God will be multiplied in their lives. In the name of Jesus, the blessing that you have made are to be to the body of Christ. We ask of God that that blessing, Lord, will continue to flow. Not only within the, uh, uh, America here, but to all their churches in Africa. Thank you for hearing us. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We give you praise and glory. As we go into the worship service, Holy Spirit divine, we are asking, Lord, that your power, your presence, Lord, will be with us today in Jesus' name. We will see you in the new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ, as we worship you, the power of God will come down. You will to consume everything in the lives of men and women. Thank you for your loss. Let's send it in the name of the Lord. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Let's put our hands together for the Lord Jesus Christ. And the first year comes for us. What won't be thou art
the Almighty God, the Almighty of Holy Name. Be that exalted and lead us. Be that exalted and lead us. Be that exalted and lead us forever shall be. Hallelujah, hallelujah to your holy name. We give you praise. In Jesus' name, we have worship. Amen. Can we take the name of the name? Oh, happy day that fits my choice.
worship him, bless his holy name. He's a great, great father. He's so huge. I was thinking yesterday, I said, Lord, if it is not you that be with my Israel, many people will mock your name in my life. They will say, hey, who get out of hmm. Father, <laughs> you prove yourself strong in our life. You gave us, you gave us everything that no man can give. Worshiping. Please, sister and brother, bless his name. He has been so good to, to you in all kind. Many are gone. Many have been defeated. Or that is your hope. We are not making jest. We are not making, we are not making jest of anyone. We are just thanking him. He has been good. In all ways, all around. Thank him, thank him, thank him. It deserves your appreciation. It deserves your kneeling down a room. When you are sick, who, 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 who give you healing? It was him. He showed up when time was so hard. He showed up and he made a way. When people think it has, it has finished with you, he just started. Even in this church, when people say, oh, no, the Bible said he has no one. But the gate of evil here cannot be built against this church. He brought you here. He brought me here for a purpose. Thank him for that purpose. We are just going to be taking him today. He has given us everything. He has provided everything. His heart has lifted us up. Thank him, thank him, worship him in the beauty of his holiness. Worship him in the beauty of his power. In the name that he gave unto us, that is above our name. The blood that he provided for you, that will give you conqueror. The power that he has given to you to travel upon every surface and stop you. And all the powers of the enemy. And even nothing shall by any means hurt us. We thank you, Lord. We bless your name. Appreciate all of We thank you. We thank you for good job. We thank you. We thank you for peace. Thank you, oh Lord, for good health. Thank you, Father. We bless you. We appreciate you. I say that thanks in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. The blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus set me free. From sin and sorrow, the blood of Jesus set me free. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Sit, my brother. What was the blood of Jesus set you free from? From sin and sickness, the blood of Jesus set me free. Oh, the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus set me free. The sin and sorrow. The blood of Jesus set me free. Let's now prophesy into our body that you, my God, hear the word of the Lord. The church, every terminal disease, the church, every sickness of the time, the church, every COVID, my body, you will not have all in place against me. My head, you will not have all in place against me. Prophesize into your body, into the body of Christ. Prophesy, ah, prophesy concerning this job. Oh Lord, we pray, oh God, my Father, let your blood reject every evil, every sickness in our body, in our head, in the name of Jesus. Concerning my name and my family, concerning for square river, in the name of Jesus, we reject bad news, we reject sickness. My body of Christ, our body of Christ, reject bad news in the name of Jesus. We will not be a victim of evil occurrences in the name of Jesus. And my body, my blood, reject high blood pressure in the name of Jesus. Terminal disease, I reject it. My body, reject sickness in Jesus' name. We pray. Amen. Say, I shall live. The long, the day that God want me to live on hell, no power shall terminate me. In the name of Jesus, I, I shall 
to come together to pray. May the Lord answer our prayers in Jesus' name. And on Sundays, as we know, for leaders, we have to come as early as 10 o'clock to join the morning prayer with leaders um, just for 35 minutes after we move into uh, the main auditorium for the main program. And that starts by 10.30 uh, with the manner and the figures of God after we move to morning manner and after that praise and worship service. See, it's not by coming late to church that will make you like, uh, oh, so yeah, just come. Let me just see. You have to witness every bit of the service, and that will make it a complete service in you. Amen. The Lord bless us as we come in Jesus' name. Our AGMM is coming up on the fourth Sunday of August. So we expect everyone to join in by 10 a.m. We're doing it on Zoom, 10 a.m. And people that have attended before, you know it's an interacting uh, meeting. We come together to like uh, share what, what you want to ask about what's going on in church. That's the time you can ask, freely ask. And you get your answer right. Amen. Amen. All the time. Right. Uh, the children can go back to their department after the open. Amen. The youth. So. Ready is ready to bless you. Honor the Lord with your substance. Shall we all sing? Let us bring out our tithes and offering. We thank you unto Him, and God Almighty will be faithful unto you. When you give unto the Lord, it shall be given back unto you. This is His word and not the word of man. He has commanded us, as he said, we should give, and it shall be given unto us. The, we are given unto God, not unto any man. You are given unto God, and you want to live a life of an overcomer. Give unto the Lord. Don't be stingy with your sultan. Praise the Lord. Shall we all pray? Our Father and our God, we bless and honor you. For the way you have been providing for all our needs. It is not how much we can do, for it is by your mercy and by your grace. We thank you, O oh God, for your provision, not in terms of money alone. Father, the provision of good health, the provision of shelter, how much more the provision of life. That we are alive today, it is by your grace and by your mercy. Father, as we bring our tithes and offering before you this day, we pray that you will sanctify with the blood of Jesus. Father, we pronounce your blessings upon it in the name of Jesus. We pray that you will open the floor gates of heaven and pour out your blessings upon us in Jesus' name. Is there any need in the life of anyone in this church? Father, Lord, we pray that you will meet by your glory in the name of Jesus. Father, we bless and we honor you. Let our life showcase your glory here on earth in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, everlasting Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
that finger that binds us together as children of God to serve him in the beauty of his holiness. Father, we are grateful for this finger. We pray that this finger will move now this again. To by the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, man. In the mighty name of Jesus. Holy Spirit of mine, I have no word of my own. I depend and rely on you. You know the mind of God for your people. Speak unto us. Declare the mind of the Almighty God unto us this morning. In the name of Jesus. And let the name of our God Jesus Christ be glorified. Thank you for doing it, Father. In Jesus' wonderful name we have been. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The theme for the month says divine healing. And this is wellness. The text is taken from Jeremiah 30, 17, and God John 1, 2. My topic is awesome earth. Awesome earth. The text is taken from God John 1, 2. The same as our team text and in Maya 30, 17. Also means sound of the horse. Why out? A state of wellness or free from sickness. Putting the two together, like having a sound of the horse, wellness or freedom from sickness. I pray the Lord will bless us with sound earth in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. For awesome healing, the root cause of the sickness must be identified before treatment. When we identify it, we will be able to treat from the source. Thank God for our life in the world who has taught us that the word of from the word of God that sickness came to the world because of sin or as a result of sin. We pray this morning that wherever the devil is punishing most or using any sin to bring sickness into our life, the Lord will take care of us and deliver us from all forms of sins in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. No wonder. The Lord Jesus Christ has to forgive that man of passing before the Lord. And we remember. This will be found in Matthew 19. We are not going to read because of time. And the man at best, 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 who was healed at the pool, Jesus met him in John 5 4 in the temple and warned him not to go back to the sea again because the first thing that come upon him, once again, I pray that the Lord will deliver us. From every form of sin, the devil is using to put us in bondage of sickness in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Brethren, healing of a child of God begins from his soul. From his soul or our soul. This is part of us that is very important to the Lord. When the Lord formed man, he breathed his breath inside the man, a man became a living soul. Soul is very, very important to the Lord, and that is why He wants Job and He wants Satan when He desired to uh, torment Job that you can do all things to him, but He never told his soul. We praise God that our second test this morning, please, if we have a Bible, shall we bring a Bible out? We're going to see you together. Our second test, Lord John, one. Two says, and we get it. We have put it together. Be done, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospered. In your Bible, I want you to please underline uh, prosper first. According to the, the, the word of God, as it is stated in John, in what John wants to prosper us. Prosper is your prosperity, it's your blessings from the Lord. And the Lord is saying unto us that He wants us to 
have blessings. Blessings. And that is why you will not bless him. The first thing that God will give to a man is the gift of blessings. He said, it shall be fruitful. Multiply. Subdue. Replenish the earth. And take the world. Then the second one is earth. 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 Then the third one, have you seen it? The third one is soul. Underline prosper. Underline F and underline so. I said prosperity begins with a so for the child of God. If the soul of any man is sick, that man is in trouble. A man is in trouble. If your soul is sick, you will have problems. Not every problem with you, but eternal problem. I pray that our soul will not be saved. What do we do is to treat our soul? To treat and not your soul with the word of the Lord. To call in the spirit of the Lord to help you grow in your soul. The soul must develop and grow mature. There are things the soul will run away from when growing in the Lord. There are things that the soul will not be able to do. The soul must not be saved. In the, in, in, in the passage that we read, I said there are three elements that pull up the awesome. They're talking about the topic says awesome earth. They are talking about the awesome earth of the child of God. The prosperity of soul is number one. One of the key elements, the three elements in that passage is prosperity of soul. Life without Christ is in crisis. If the soul is not saved, that soul cannot enjoy the presence of the Lord. And we need this person to accompany us everywhere we go and in all that we do. The second one is prosperity. That yes, prosper. It refers to the blessings that God has blessed us with. Prosper is blessings. So you know this to prosper. You prosper to, to, to maintain yourself. You prosper so that, that life may be comfortable for you. You prosper in blessings, blessings of the body, the fruit of the body, and blessings generally to keep you comfortable and enjoy the life that God has given you. That is why God bless man after creating him. And the third one is earth. Prosper in good earth. Earth is to sustain. Prolong life, prolong our life for us to enjoy the blessings of the Lord. We are not prospering in good health. We cannot enjoy the prosperity that we have. I've mentioned the prosperity of soul. If the soul is sick, man is in trouble. Mark 8, 36 says, For what shall a man give in the next stage of the soul? What can you do? There is nothing. We must ensure that our soul is healthy, or healthy, rooted and nourished by the word of God. I pray that our soul shall not be lost in the mighty name of Jesus. I've said it that God bless man with all blessings that man needs to enjoy his life, to make life comfort comfortable for him. Even in Genesis 1 28, immediately after the creation of man. Uh, let's just look at the parable of uh, the, the poor Lazarus. So the poor Lazarus was not in soul, but not in good health, and not in the presence. He suffered. Same at the gate of that poor and the rich man. But when he died, he went to the bosom of Abraham. But the rich man died. That's why the father. He prospered in, 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 in health and in all blessings. He went to hell. He went to hell. Our soul must prosper. The Lord will help us that we shall be fruitful in body and our soul will prosper in Jesus' name. In health, our health is equally important. In fact, when we are in good health, we have hope for better life. 
because when there is no end, there is nothing that will help. We can be very stickingly rich. We have men that are like that, but there is no good end. And some of them are begging that all the riches and wealth should be taken away from them so that their heads will be restored. And even some pray for them. That will not be a portion with the mighty name of Jesus. The Lord will help us to keep our soul for Him and to also have good health to enjoy the blessings of the Lord that has been given unto us in the mighty name of Jesus. And this also will take us to Jeremiah 30, verse 17, the second text. For I will restore earth unto thee, and I will yield thee of thy wounds, of thy wounds. This is God speaking here. It's not a man. Our God is God of purpose. Whatever he says he will do, the Lord will do it. He said, I will do, I will restore earth unto thee, and I will yield thee of thy wounds. Not one wound, not two wounds, of all wounds. That, that, that Sam says, many are the afflictions of the righteous man, but the Lord delivered him from them all. If God will deliver any more from all things, this money is visiting you and delivering you from all your wounds in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And in that verse, he said, because they call thee an outcast, saying, This is Zion, whom no man seeketh. After whatever name that has been given to you because of the challenges you are going through, or because of the state of your head, the Lord will change your story, give you a new name in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Our Father in heaven can do all things, right? And I don't know your wounds, but He knows them. It may be emotional wounds as a betrayer. Denial, disappointment, loss of job, financial wound, domestic wound, academic or career wound, any wound causing you struggle, bitterness, sign wherever you have been wounded, battered, and shattered, the Lord will bring the solution. It's going to kill you in the mighty name of Jesus. What's happened to me? A, 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 a car that has any accident, when it is battered. It will be returned back to, 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 to the workshop. And by the time they finish with it, will it still look the same? It will become another car. It will become a new one. It's just the engine that will show that it is not new. But <laughs> people will see it and be wondering. And that is what God is going to do for all of us this morning. Because it will cause us to return to Him if we bind our wounds. And we heal every wound that is making us to start in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Psalm 35, Psalm 30, verse 5 says, Weeping may endure for the night, but joy, joy comes in the morning. This is the morning of our God in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And declaring to us that the siege is over. Because if Paul says he will do it, if the Almighty God, with him, nothing shall be impossible. He, he can do all things. He's going to do it in our lives in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. He promised to do three hours for us this morning, and we're quickly going to go through it. He promised to rescue us, he is going to repair us, and he is going to restore us. That is the promise of the Lord for every one of us. I must also believe in just promises because he's going to do it. We, still, we are still talking about awesome earth. God will rescue your soul. If you are here and you have not given your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, according to the plan of the Almighty God for His people, John 3 16, the Lord loves the Lord. That He gave His only begotten Son. He has given you the Lord Jesus Christ. That when you will come to Him, you will be a partaker of the bread of life. And I'm saying unto you that healing in the bread 
of the children of God, and we must be given to the God. So, if you are here this morning, or you are listening unto me online, please return to the Lord, surrender unto Him, accept Him as your God and personal Savior, and He will give you the bread of life. The second one is repair. I said the Lord will repair and bind our wounds. What do you want from us is to ask. Matthew 7 7. He said, Ask, and we shall be given. When bad news met with the Lord, he ran and cried for mercy. And that is what God wants you to do this morning to cry unto Him because He's ready to do whatever you ask Him to do in the mighty name of Jesus. He said, Whatever you ask in my name, I will. Is a promise keeper, miracle worker, a covenant keeper. He will not pay in his words. Whatever he says to you, he's not a man. He will do it. He needs you to ask. Because that just have to be specific in whatever you are asking from him. There's new that that was had a problem. And he still asks him, What do you want me to do? And that was just said unto me. Give me my sight, and that's exactly what the Lord did for me today. As you turn into the Lord, He said, Wounds is not asking for just one, the healing is for wounds. Tell Him everything that you are facing that are not compatible. The Lord Himself will attend to you and heal you in Jesus' name. Faithful is He that called us. That we do it. Faithful is the Lord God Almighty that declared the thing through his servant that will wash over his word and bring it to pass. All that we need is to trust him and ask him to be healed. Our Heavenly Father is God of restoration, and that is the third one. He's going to restore us this morning. Job was battered, wounded. Job was tortured. Your case cannot be worse than that. What you are going through presently cannot be as bad as what Job went through. And if God will deliver Job and restore him, uh -uh, he's going to do it for you. It is not late. God will not come too late. And he will not come too early. It will come at the nick of time. You might be crying. You might be waiting secretly, talking to him. But today is the day that the Lord will answer you. He will bind your womb. He will restore all that you have lost in the past. Joel 2 25 says, He will restore all the number of years that locals and canker worm has given. Whatever the locals and canker worm of this world has given in your life, the Lord will restore them to you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Financially, you will restore them. Domestically, you will restore them. In your marriage, the Lord will restore them. In the mighty name of Jesus. Whatever you are going through in your career, in your profession, academically, the Lord will restore you. And when He does it, He will do it fully that nobody will even know. The stars will not be seen. In the mighty name of our Lord Jesus. That is what God can do. That is what God can do. When he restores us, by the time he finishes with us, we will come out as a Christian gold. And that is what God will do in our lives in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Shall we take us this uh, chorus, worship God, and begin to tell him what we want him to do in your life? Before I do the Lord, before I hear all what you want him to do 
even in your life this morning. Our God is faithful. Our God is not a disappointment. He's dependable. Our God is reliable. Whatever you tell him to do, you will do. He said, ask. Whatever you want to ask in my name, he said, you will do it. He said, we have not been still because we have not asked. That we must ask until our joy is full. Let's begin to ask him. Send it to him. Your mom, your dad cannot ask on your behalf. You have a creator who has a plan for your life, who wants to restore you, who wants to renew your life, who wants to redeem you from the pit of God, who wants to give you life in abundance. He wants to see that storm in your life. He wants to feel the storm of shame in your life and mockery. He wants, to, he wants you to receive life and life in abundance. God is here. The mighty Redeemer, our Savior, is here to do whatever you are trusting him for, and he shall do it. Faithful is the Lord that declare you can see. And faithful is he that can do it. Faithful is the Lord. Faithful is the Lord. It's not a disappointment. Ask him this morning, and he will do it for you. Thank you, Lord, for the war that has been sent out to us this afternoon. The war that rescues, the war that restores, the war that repairs all that are sent to us. Brothers and sisters, let's commit those three aspects of the beloved form. If you are there, you are still in the same. The Lord God of heaven is there to rescue you. Oh, from the body, all our sin, and bring you up to the mountain top. He did it in times past. I want you to talk to the Lord. This morning, God has spoken to us through his servant in a very simple, clear language. Father, I want you to talk to the Lord God. How many things are there? There is something God wants to repair in your life. Yeah? The servant of God says, Father and mother, I cannot ask for you. You can ask for yourself because you are adults. What is that thing that you want God to repair? Those things that are brought to low. Those things that are brought in to low estates. You are asking God this morning. No repair. Repair them. Repair them in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, we thank you. And of course, that they know that, that the years, that the locust, the cankerworm, the caterpillar are eating, that this God of restoration will restore them back. Father, thank you for your servant. That Lord, that you are used to minister to us. The very church. Thank you, Lord God of heaven. Thank you for everything that you have used, that Lord, to deposit in us. Thank you for the world. The world has gone for. I pray this morning that this world will fall into fertile grounds, into fertile grounds, yielding, yielding, 30 fold, yielding, 50 fold, yielding, 100 fold. Oh, Father, I pray that this one will not fall in the midst of cows in rocky grounds. Oh, thank you. Blessed in the name of the Lord. Maybe you are there this morning, whether you are alive, online, or you are in this auditorium, and you are asking God, Lord, rescue me from some situations of life that as or maybe you want God to rescue your business. Your business has no start. And you are saying, Lord, let my business be rescued for your word that I will send for. Eh? I want you to talk to the Lord this morning. He will do it. He will do it. Says, uh, we will be in good hands eh, physically, even as our soul prospers, whatsoever. 
Lord God of heaven, mean to be rescued in the lives of men and women today. Lord, do it in Jesus' name. Thank you and thank you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Or maybe you are there this morning, brothers and sisters. Not even your business. There are areas of your life. You have been told that a bedroom that is shattered and battered. When it is repaired, it becomes working again. I want you to pray this morning. That Lord, whatever has been shattered, battered, in my life, whatever I've brought reproach to my life, Holy Spirit divine. Repair them. Repair them. Talk to the Lord, brother. Talk to the Lord, sister. God has spoken to me, and I believe God has spoken to you. Thank you, Father. Let's send it to the Lord, brother. And maybe you are there. You have been, you have been here. You have been in this country for one year, two years, ten years. And uh, you have been all the way to this place. And you are still here. Where it should be. I want you to talk to the Lord this morning. It's a God of restoration. We saw all the years that the locusts, the caterpillars, had eaten in my life. In the last of every year, I want you to talk to the Lord. Thank you, Father. Bless in the name of the Lord. We give you praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Shall we pray? At Father level, we want to thank you this afternoon for your word that has gone forth. The Bible says, He sent forth His word, and the word heals and delivers from all forms of destruction. I pray this morning that the word of the Lord that we have heard, Lord, we hear proofs. That we pray restoration and repairs into every life that has been damaged, into every business that has been mesmerized. Lord, I ask for God that the word of the Lord that we have had today, Lord, we bring healing unto our lives. As many Lord as are sick in the body, the word of the Lord has come forth. Holy Spirit divine, He said in that word. Lord, that I will restore head unto thee, and I will restore, uh, and I will heal thy wounds. Father, I pray this morning, let the head of your people be restored. Let the head of your people be restored. Father, right from the crown of their head to the sole of their feet, restore their head in Jesus' name. Amen. I know that I know we are asking every wound. That have been created in the lives of your people, wounds that the enemy, Lord, had created in the lives of your people. I ask, oh God, he said, and I will heal thy wounds, wounds, Lord, of frustration, wounds, Lord, God of heaven, that tongues, Lord, are spoken into the lives of men and women and brought. I brought the reproach into their lives. He said, I will heal those wounds. I pray this morning. Every wound represented in this auditorium. Every wound represented marital wounds, uh, financial wounds, emotional wounds. Oh God, I pray that Lord you will heal in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we pray. That Lord God of heaven, wounds that our head had created in us, Holy Spirit divine, heal those wounds. Thank you for hearing us. Every one of us that have had this word, I pray this morning that Lord, when we go back home to search the scriptures, Father, just like the Berean Christians, Lord, we will receive more blessings. As we sit at thy feet to study the world, Amen. thank you for hearing. We commit your servant that you have used into your hands. Very church. Lord God of heaven, I pray. Uh, I say, sister, because of the situation here, it will not be more than 25 minutes. 
and he spent 23 minutes. Lord, it is not the levy, the land of that that we spend. It is the anointing upon the world. I ask, oh God, that you will release fresh unction unto your servant Amen. in the name of Jesus Christ. When you are to open the mouth to speak the word, you will build that mouth with power and authority. We thank you for the As we go into the week, make it a week of blessings, a week of joy. Ah, Father, I ask for God, do new things in the lives of men and women. That by the time we come back here next week, God will be a glorious testimony to share with us one another. No one will be missing. No one will be missing. No, 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 no position will be empty. Our positions in our homes will not be empty. You will keep up your people. You will take care of your people. Thank you for hearing us. Let's send it in the name of the Lord. We give you praise and glory. Thank you and thank you. Hallelujah to your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Shall we rise up? 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 Whenever we are praying here, don't be talking. Peace. Peace. What you are saying is that when you, we all say amen, what we are saying is let it be so. But when we are praying and you are holding another meeting or you are praying your own prayer, you are insulting the Holy Spirit. Then be careful. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we are going into the week. Make it a week of joy. Amen. A week of blessing. Amen. A week of victory. Amen. I ask Lord God of heaven that new things you will do in every land Amen. and in every home. Amen. We commit all our children unto you. None of these children will be missing. Amen. We pray, Lord, that that none of our children will be missing. Amen. And all of them, Lord, in their places of work, we ask, oh God, none of them will make mistakes. Amen. Keep them all from better professional hazards. Amen. We thank you, Father. We pray for our country of origin, Nigeria. We ask, Lord God of heaven, that you will rescue that nation. Amen. You will rescue Nigeria from the hands of banditry. Our politicians who are bandits, Lord, you will rescue Nigeria from their hands. Right from a councillor to chairman of councils to state assembly, all of them up to the presidency. Lord, rescue Nigeria from all these bandits in Jesus' name. Have mercy. What is said of the of the few elects? Ah, Father, the, 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 the wealth of Nigeria. It's in the hands of politicians. They stole them. They stole those money because we are politicians to serve. Father, we pray, rescue us from their hands in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you, Father. And Lord, we ask that we be the, 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 the defense city of Nigeria. There is no more security there. Uh, they even, even the, the, the bandits are threatening to, to, to kidnap the president. They are threatening to kidnap governors. Lord, I pray, be the defense of that nation in Jesus' name. Amen. For the sake of those of us who have people there, who have relations there, Lord, God of heaven, be a refuge in Nigeria. We thank you, Father. Blessed in the name of the Lord. May the Lord bless you. Let the Lord keep you. Amen. Let the Lord keep you from falling. Amen. Let the Lord God of heaven keep you from falling sick. Amen. And may the Lord God of heaven be the head around you. Amen. Even now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Can we share together Psalm 23, verse 6? Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. 
and as I dwell in the presence of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Thank you. God bless you. In Jesus' name.